Hi to all you landscape photographers. I am Christian from ISO, and I'm joined here today by Serdar from Photo Tours for You. We would like to invite you to experience the color class Lofoten with us. We will fly together to the north of Norway, celebrate the best of landscape photography, and really go through the entire workflow with you, from the conception to the actual photography, and then on to the image editing and finally to printing. The experts amongst you will perhaps have noticed that we are not yet on the Lofoten, right? <laughs> That's true. I imagine the north of Norway to be a bit different. So, Serdar, we are off tomorrow. Tell me why we have met today. Photography does not take place in a vacuum. We're going to introduce you to all the equipment that we will be using for the color class in detail. So let's get going. Exactly. One of the most important aspects of photography is, of course, the camera itself, and for this we have chosen the Fuji GFX 50S, a very compact medium format camera. You will notice that it is not much bigger than a professional digital reflex camera, but has a very much more powerful sensor and considerably more than 50 million pixel resolution. And that means we have amazingly good dynamics on the one hand, as well as a very high resolution. So, ideal for landscape photography. We also have two APS-C Fujifilm cameras with us. One of them is the X-H1, a camera that has been optimized primarily for filming. It does, of course, also take fantastic photos, but has some new features which no Fujifilm camera had so far. Apart from that, we also have the X-T2, which I will use most of the time to take making of shots by hand. Those are the camera bodies we have with us, and of course, a whole pile of lenses. So, Sadar, what would you say is the second most important after the camera? Mm, yeah, I don't have to think long about that. For me, the second most important thing is the tripod. That literally keeps your feet on the ground. It is when you put up the tripod, in my opinion, that you really feel that you have arrived at the location. There are technical aspects that we should mention, though, right? What is important in a tripod, after all? They all have three legs. Why do we use Gitzo? Chris, you know a lot about the tripod. Exactly. I have chosen a tripod from the Systematic series for the GFX. They stand out for being extremely stable, extremely robust, and with extremely low vibration. As they are made of carbon, though, they are also still comparatively lightweight. We want to be able to carry it all. I use the tripod from the Mountaineer series, the 2543L. L stands for long, so we reach eye level. What I really appreciate is, just compare it to the systematic, which has no centre pillar. The Mountaineer has got one. This has advantages, but disadvantages too, because with a thing like this, you can't take photos at ground level. With the Mountaineer, there is a kind of quick remove mechanism here, and then you can take the thing off and keep it in your backpack and then you can work at ground level. These are perspectives which, in my opinion, give the whole thing a bit of spice. Chris, just to mention again, on the Lofoten, we're going to spend a lot of time on water. What is really important here is that we have seals in all of the tripod legs. These O-rings seal off these relatively delicate screw threads from sand. That simply is what makes the difference. As well as this big guy, we also have a travel tripod with us. That is, the Traveller series, and is especially compact. How do they manage that? They manage it by making the legs foldable upwards, because normally the tripod is this way round. So, Sardar, as far as camera and tripod are concerned, we can tick them off the list. For landscape photographers, there is still something which is vitally important, and that is the topic of filters. That's right, and I often admit to that. For me, filters are an integral part of my photography. Forget Photoshop and Lightroom. I need filters to shape light on location. This is why, with the help of our partner Haider, we have stocked up with filters. For that, we work with gradients of grey, as they have here. 
Of course, we have polarizing filters. We can regulate reflection with those. Apart from that, we have so-called neutral density filters with us. And what you can see here, and I have to tell Christian, it is a brilliant idea. He has clearly labeled the filters so that you can directly see which filter type and strength it is. Exactly. I just used a normal label printer, and you can make your life so much easier. Yes, definitely. Here, I've got a color management tool. Reference cards from Data Color. They help with the raw conversion. And here is the spider cube on the top. This allows you to perfectly place the highlights, the shadows, and the white balance. That is just a small part of what we have with us for color management. But as things like printer, monitors, and paper are so ridiculously heavy, we didn't want to pack all that into our flight luggage. That is all on a big pallet, and it's hopefully already in our hotel. I hope so too. <laughs> Next, we're going to show you a few tricks, knacks, household objects that nobody thinks about, but can make a small but distinct difference when you're on location. We are on the Lofoten. The Lofoten are 300 kilometers north of the Arctic Circle, so it can be rather cold even in April. I start off with spikes. Well, these aren't spikes, but real cleats. Makes sense. Why do we need these? We need them when we are working by the sea, for example, on the beach, and the beach doesn't consist of sand but rocks. The waves splash, the water freezes, and you can't see that on the rocks. You know what I mean? You take one step and suddenly your foot slips because you haven't got any grip anymore. They give you exactly what you need, namely grip. So if you should go to the Lofoten, then they're indispensable. You must buy spikes. End of story. You need them. Next, rechargeable batteries. This is a battery charger that allows us to charge batteries with a power bank here. It's 20,000 milliampere. Just watch. Here's the battery. Now I press the button and then it's charging. That is especially useful for people with those mirrorless cameras. Because we need more batteries. Now you're asking yourselves, what is that there? Looks strange, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a shower cap. When we are by the sea and we are working near the water's edge, the Atlantic tends to spit at you. That is what you call sea spray. Especially the filters and lenses, or in fact the whole camera often, if we have to wait, gets covered in sea spray that is made of salty water, which when it dries, will leave a thin coating of salt on the gear, which is hard to clean. So what you do is be proactive and cover the camera up with the shower cap while you're having to wait. Let's turn to this thing here. Looks like nerve poison, but it isn't. This is cleaning fluid. You use it in the following mixing ratio. One part, 70% alcohol, with four parts distilled water. You use distilled demineralized water. What is that for? That is in case your filters have been covered in sea spray. It works like window cleaning liquid without soap. It's important that it is without soap. You clean them with one or even better, more than several microfiber cloths. The bigger they are, the better. I've got at least three or four in my backpack. I often need them. Then zipper bags. If you have a wide mesh microfiber cloth, then in your hotel room, you can just give it a good soaking under the tap. Put the wet cloth in one of the zipper bags. If the filter has a dry salt coating, just wrap it in the wet cloth. That will loosen the coating. After that, you can finish cleaning the filter with a fresh microfiber cloth. And now a final point. These headlamps let us see where we are treading and still have our hands free. They come with a white light and a red light. I have the red light here, as you don't have the extent of light pollution which you have with the white light because the light cone is much larger and you have the advantage that you don't lose your night vision.
So now you know all the things we have to take with us. So now the question is, how are we going to transport it all to the north of Norway? The answer to the question, with these really great F-stop backpacks. We've both been using them for quite a while. The great thing about these backpacks is that they are very modular. On the one hand, you have an extremely high-class, solid, waterproof, quality trekking rucksack. And then there are various internal camera units that you can choose, depending on the size of your equipment. The nice thing is, you can really store your stuff well, and when the backpack is upright, nothing falls out. We photographers have the tendency to always think of our photo equipment, but when you're on location for a longer period of time, you're bound to feel peckish. Yeah, that can happen. Or you're freezing. You need a hand warmer or whatever. And the F-stop backpacks also have space for a lot more gear. They mostly have a pouch at the front, yeah, and some of them have side pockets. Yeah, yes, said Ah. Uh, now all we have to do is pack. So, today's the day. Time to go. Loaded up with lots of luggage, I'm setting off, without Seadar at first, from Frankfurt, heading north. The first flight is to Oslo. There we have to collect all our luggage, go through customs, check in again, and then fly to Evenes. Twenty minutes to boarding. We have to get a move on. I've reached the connecting flight at the last minute. It will take me to the most northern, bigger airport on the Norwegian mainland. Harstad Narvik will be our starting point to the Lofoten and is 300 kilometers north of the Arctic Circle. Pick up the luggage collect the rented car, and then I'm on the last leg of the journey to our base in Svalbard. In the next episode of Color Class Lofoten, I'll meet Serdar again at our hotel in Svalbard. We'll discuss how we'll go about the location planning and which tools are available for that. It is looking good for the next few days, and then we can at last press the shutter release on our camera to capture the fantastic light atmosphere of the Lofoten. Join us for the next episode of the Color Class Lofoten.